Good afternoon. Welcome back to the last of our three organic analyses video. Analysis videos, actually. Got my plurals all wrong there. Sorry about that. Didn't get an A in English, honestly. It was a long time ago, though. Um, we're going to have a look at nuclear magnetic resonance today. Um, I think probably in the real world of chemistry, the most useful tool, I reckon. Um, and we're going to have a look at a certain type of it. You can get a whole bunch of different types, but we're interested in what is called a proton. NMR, which actually is a wee bit deceptive as far as names goes. It's actually to do with the nucleus uh, of, in this particular case, any atom, but in this particular case, we're looking at the hydrogen nucleus, which, of course, is a proton. Um, not very often we pay that much attention to nuclei in chemistry. We're usually obsessed with electrons and their dance of joy. Um, but in this particular case, we're looking at the nuclei, the protons in the centre of hydrogen atoms. Um, there's all sorts of details that you will learn about this if you go off to do uh, university chemistry that I've probably forgotten because it was a long time since I was there. But let's stick with what the SQA want you to know. And let's have the cheap seats today. They want you to know um, that the proton in the centre of a hydrogen atom can behave like a tiny magnet. Um, and in a strong magnetic field, if you pop, if you have a load of hydrogen atoms here, for example, and you pop them into a strong magnetic field, um, then some of them line up with the field, uh, and the others line against the field. Um, the way you do that uh, is, uh, then what you do after that, sorry, is you fire um, radio frequency energy. So you line them up in a magnetic field, number one. Uh, so number one, line up. In magnetic field, just in case they ask you to talk about this in the open ender. I don't think it'll ever need this level of detail though, I'll be honest, but it is in the outcomes, so you never know. Number two, you hit them with a radio frequency energy, um, and this causes them to flip uh, from one alignment to the other alignment, and in the process, they give out um, some radiation, and you can catch that radiation. Uh, and plot it on an NMR spectrum, nuclear magnetic resonance, by the way. I think I forgot to say that. Uh, I'm getting old. Um, what else? Where are we going to go from here? Uh, we should probably have a look, perhaps, at... Uh, let's draw ourselves a typical uh, NMR uh, spectrum. Um, they have what's called chemical shift along the bottom. Don't worry about what that actually means. Uh, or if you're interested, yeah, we, we can tell you. Um, basically, what you need to use is a calibrating chemical. Uh, and the chemical, interestingly, this this is named... Um, as it, let me check. Um, once upon a time, they wanted you to know what the calibration chemical was. Sorry, let me pause this. Is the rambling slow in your ear? Yeah, yeah, they still do. They want you to know that what, the, what they do in the machine first is they in, inject tetramethyl silane. TMS, which is a silicon atom with um, four methyl groups arranged around about it. Um, and all these hydrogens here give a big ping, and we call that the zero. We call that the zero point. Um, and all the other... Uh, um, there's technical reasons why we use that, but I'm not going to go into it. All the other normal uh, hydrogen atoms in a hydrocarbon, um, or any of the organic molecules actually, are all shifted to the left of that. The units they use for chemical shift are PPM. Not to be confused with PPM when you see it in calculations. Uh, PPM in calculations is such a stupid unit, I wish they would take it out. If you're interested, just as a side note, so PPM in calcs means one milligram per kilogram or one milligram per litre. I know, don't show it to me. Those are not necessarily the same. It depends on the density of the substance, which is why I think that's a terrible unit and shouldn't be in there. But it's cropped up the last several years. So that was just a little side issue. Um, chemical shift is measured in PPM, and we have the chemical shift going like one, two, three. All you need to know, folks, is that this is a way of spotting a... It's like the wavelength on an infrared spectrum uh, or an optical uh, emission spectrum. And up the side here, isn't actually labelled usually as anything. Um, that's because normally you would have like the amount or the intensity of the substance. And there is a way to measure the amount or the intensity, but it's an unusual way and we'll come back to it in the very near future. Um, right, so 
let's have a look at what we need to talk about next. Well, we move on to let's move on to a uh, hydrogen environments because that's the word that's the proper word for it, and I call it different flavors of hydrogen. Excuse me, just a second. Right, didn't want to bore you watching me draw them. Now, what we got here, guys, we got um, four different molecules. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and spot how many different environments of hydrogen there are. What does that mean? Well, it means that this hydrogen is equivalent to this hydrogen, which is equivalent to that one and that one. These are all four identical hydrogens from the point of view of their chemical shift. And from the point of view of NMR spectroscopy, these four hydrogens are all identical. So there is only one single hydrogen environment for this molecule. That's nice and simple. Let's have a look at this one here. Um, this one here has got a CH3 then, so these three are joined on to a CH2, which is joined on to another CH3. And these three are joined on to a CH2, which is joined on to another CH3. So, these hydrogens here and these hydrogens here are in the same environment as each other. So they are identical from the point of view of NMR. The, uh, the bell. These two, on the other hand, uh, are not the same as these. So these ones here are a different environment. So there are two different environments for this particular molecule from the point of view of the hydrogen uh, nuclei. Let's do propon 2 all next. I wonder if you could tell me how many hydrogen environments you reckon are in this one. Before I spoil the party with telling you the answer. These three, COH, these three, COH. So these are identical. And of course this guy here, very much different. He's in his whole environment to himself. Um, so again, three types. This one here is slightly deceptive. Uh, this one here uh, has got, well, these hydrogens, CH3s, and the same as these CH3s. And these have a C2H5 on one side and a CH3 on one side. And so do these. CH3, C2H5. So, odd as this seems, these four hydrogens are shooted in a different colour. I'm a total muppet. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. So there are only two different flavours or environments for hydrogens in this molecule here. Um, if we were to look at an isomer of propan 2 oh, by the way, have a look at this for a second. One, two, three. This time we'll stick the OH at the end. Now, speculation time while I'm drawing this. See if you can work out how many different environments we've got this time around. This is obviously an oddball one at the end here. Then you've got your CH3s at one end. So that's the second environment. Now, these two hydrogens this time, great timing, Bill. These two hydrogens this time um, have a CH3 on one side and a CHOH on the other side. These guys do not have the same. They've got C2H5 and an OH. So just for a change, different pen, hey. We've got a purple environment and a brown out pens. So let's have a brown environment. So there in fact are four different environments. Right. So what's this got to do with the graph then, hey? What's this got to do with your NMR spectrum? Well, basically, uh, there's two different types. There's a low-resolution type. We'll have a look at that first. And then we'll move back to the high-resolution, which was just introduced a couple of years ago. It's a bit trickier, and it's surprisingly complex. And it's wonderful, because there's not an awful lot the SQA can ask, because it is such a difficult topic. Low-resolution spectra basically have a single spike for each hydrogen environment. And the height of that spike compared to the heights of the other spikes, tell you how many of these hydrogens are present. So if we were to model, let's model um, this one. Let's model this one here. We're only going to have two spikes. Uh, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six of one environment and only one of the other. So you would, in fact, get, let's do color-coded, in fact. Blue was a smaller one. Um... So you would have some sort of indication up here, maybe call that just dots, even like one, two, three, four, five, six. So that, to pick a random number here, it's probably the wrong chemical shift. They're in your data book. I'll come back to that in two minutes. 
um, and the other colour was was pink. So you'd have a pink line somewhere else, uh, probably quite far away from that actually, because the OH hydrogen is quite displaced from CH hydrogens. So something like that. So that would be a ratio of six in terms of height to one because there are six of these for every one of these. Uh, and that is about it for low resolution spectra. So each environment gives you a spike. The height of the spike compared to the other spikes, that's why there's no real scale on here, um, gives you an indication of how many of this hydrogen are present compared to how many of this hydrogen. And as I said, data book time, the world's least readable data book page. Um, this is your proton NMR chart, and there's your zero point, and there's everything displaced to the left. They give that funny wee delta sign in PPM. It means a difference, of course. So if we were to have a look, in fact, let's see how close I was with that. RCH3s or R2CH2s, so these are the like basic hydrocarbon hydrogens. They're supposed to be between 0.9 and 1.5. How close did I get? I'll take that as a win. Um, alcohols, uh, not the CH3 though, we want the OH in the alcohols. Where's the other gone? Ah, there we go. ROH, it's anywhere between one and five in fact. How about that? Uh, you can choose to call that jammy, but I'm gonna call it immense skill. That I picked the right numbers randomly on the graph. Uh, last part of the video now guys, let's have a look at high resolution NMR and we're done. So here's a high resolution NMR spectrum for butan tool. Uh, pulled from an SQA question, and I'm hoping you can see that it's not single spikes anymore. The spikes have been split into what are called multiplets. For example, there's a painfully obviously three there, if you can see that in the resolution of your screen. There's two there. There appears to be five here. Uh, and it gets complex. There's a single one there, and there's multiple, multiple, multiple peaks there. Now, here is the story for high resolution NMR. It's called the N plus one rule. And what happens is your spike for that particular hydrogen gets split into N plus one multiple little spikes, where N is the number of hydrogens attached to the, attached to the next door neighbor carbon. So, it's the number of hydrogens attached to the neighbouring carbon, that's N. You stick an extra one on it, and that's how many little sub-peaks you get. Let's have a look for a second. It can get complex, um, but let's, they want, for example, this question here says, circle the hydrogen atom, or atoms, so they're not giving you any clue, on the structure below, responsible for the multiplet at 3.7 ppm. So that's that one there. We'll come back to that one in a wee second. Uh, this is an interesting one, isn't it? That is a spike that has not been split. Now, um, that has to be the only hydrogen on this structure which isn't attached to a carbon that has other hydrogens on it, if you know what I mean. So, this hydrogen here is attached to an oxygen. It's not attached to a carbon, so that is your individual spike there. Let's try and identify what's what here. Actually, guys, I should have done this in the appropriate colours. I apologise. So, that's hydrogen environment number one. So that matches up to that one here. Let's have a look at this one here that's split into two. Oh, by the way, I'm going to interrupt myself here. Really bad teaching style, sorry. How on earth do you tell? Can you judge, judge by the height? No, you can't judge by the height anymore. What you actually judge by in this one is the area underneath the spikes. It's called the integral. And if they were really worried about that, they would actually put little numbers next. Sometimes they put like a running trace next to it and it jumps up by a certain height, and now you can like measure that compared to that, and that's how you judge the numbers of hydrogens. However, you can't tell on this one. There is no indication of the integral of the area under these. So we're gonna to have to go with the pure N plus one rule and work out which hydrogens are which. Um, we should, of course, take a quick look at the number of hydrogens on here. There are, uh, you see if you can work it out how many hydrogen environments are on here. According to me, there are one. Um, this is another unique one, too. The CH3 here is attached to a carbon with an OH, so that's another unique one, so we'll call that, call these three. 
At the other end, you've got CH3, which is attached to CH2. They're unique as well. That's four. And then this little pair here squashed between an OH and a CH3. You don't get them anywhere else either. There are five hydrogen environments, if I've done this right, which means we should have like five spikes if this was a low resolution. And each spike is now subdivided into N plus one. So let's just check that. One, two, three, four, five. Grant. I do know vaguely what I'm talking about. That's a relief. Um, let's try and identify what's what here, guys. Uh, this is a twin. So this must be a hydrogen environment that's attached to where the neighbouring carbon has only got one hydrogen on it. Because one plus one gives you two. So if you'd like to jump in ahead of me and tell me which one of the one, two, three, four, five, well, that's that one. But two, three, four, five, which one do you think this is? There's your single hydrogen. Um, this one here, these three here, are attached to this carbon, and the neighbouring carbon only has one on it. So I think I'm going to call that for the spike, for the double spike. So I'm going to call that for three. Um, this one here, environment four, these hydrogens are attached to this carbon and the neighbouring carbon has got two on it. So if you add two plus one, you get a triple. So that must be number four. We're getting there. Um, it's at this point we have a bit of a dilemma, don't we? Because um, this environment number two is attached to this carbon and its neighbouring carbons have got one, two, three, four, five. So that will be split into six. Which does look indeed at first glance as if one, two, three, four, it should be that one, shouldn't it? The problem is this is split, split into multiple spikes too. Um, these two guys here, for example, these are attached to this carbon and this carbon here's neighbours has got one, two, three, four. Ah, four plus one, of course, would be five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So that's environment five. And this is environment two. So it's that hydrogen. Is there another way to check it using the data book? Perhaps. Yes, there is. Because if we have a look at this, um, this hydrogen here that we suspected is attached to COH. So if we find that in here, we find the hydrogens are attached to a COH, like that, for example, and they occur between 3.5 and 3.9. So that looks suspiciously like bang on there. And we can discount these ones, just in case there was an error here, we can discount these ones because these are down between 1 and 1.5. And, and like I said earlier on, that's your bog standard H's in a hydrocarbon. So, summary time. Nuclear magnetic resonance based on hydrogen nuclei, the protons. Line them up in a magnetic field, hit them with some radio frequency energy. They go twang, they drop to lower energy environments and they give out some energy. We can measure this energy here. We can measure it on low resolutions, in which case you get a spike for each hydrogen environment. Each hydrogen environment is the environment in which you find these hydrogens. Um, the spike's height compared to other spikes is proportional to the number of that hydrogen compared to the other ones. Um, high resolution NMR does exactly the same thing. The only difference being that each spike is now split into multiplets of uh, n plus one little individual spikes where n is the number of hydrogens attached to the neighboring carbon. Not attached to that carbon, it's attached to the neighboring carbon for environment number three. I think this is done. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.